painting features a glimpse of Roman history centered on the bloody carnage brought by gladiatorial matches. Spoliarium is a Latin word referring to the basement of the Roman Colosseum where the fallen and dying gladiators are dumped and devoid of their worldly possessions. The Spoliarium is the most valuable oil on canvas painting by Juan Luna, a Filipino educated at the Academia de Dibujo y Pintura, and at the Academia de San Fernando in Madrid, Spain. At the center of Luna's painting are fallen gladiators being dragged by Roman soldiers. The gladiators being dragged to a side depicts the Philippine situation of being suppressed and oppressed. The audience was like indifferent Filipinos who had the strength to do something but wouldn't. And the morning crowd represents those who were in pain for the situation of the country but still had hope for a better future. Hera, the queen of the Olympian gods, was finally pregnant with Zeus's child. Feeling excited, the goddess imagined how beautiful her son would be. Her expectations were enormous, as he would be the son of the king and queen of heaven. However, the child was not what she imagined. Upon seeing her son for the first time, she was horrified. He was a hairy baby with rugged features, soot-covered dark skin, becoming even uglier as he cried. The mad goddess said that he was not her son and threw him into the ocean from the top of Olympus. The little god crashed violently into the ocean waters, but survived. However, he was crippled and limped for the rest of his life. Hephaestus was rescued by the ocean-side Thetis, who quickly became attached to the child, unlike the goddess Hera. Thetis took him to the island of Lemnos, where he grew up playing with volcanoes. From childhood, Hephaestus developed an unparalleled skill in the art of metallurgy. Using the heat of the volcanoes, he created the most powerful weapons and the most beautiful jewelry. The god came of age and decided to return to Olympus. He had produced a beautiful golden throne for his true mother, the goddess Hera. Throughout his career, the Los Angeles-based sculptor Matthew Monaghan has stimulated vibrant critical discussion. His forms, variously carved, cast, or built up from materials that range from wax and paper to bronze, suggest archaeological finds, decrepit remnants of civilizations past or future that may be regarded as lamentations or admonitions. Monaghan's works have an air of quietness and distance that is intentional, they are meant to encourage contemplation. As the artist has written of his sculptures, they are remote and incomplete and need a careful observer in order to survive.